Hello, and this is Rob Bickle again. Today we're going to be taking another look at a board that needs some repair work done on it. This is the main control board, or motherboard, out of a Smokin' Token arcade game. Um, kind of looks something about like that, I think. I haven't seen the game yet. Um, that's a Smoking Token Extreme, so I'm thinking it's the same thing, but we're not entirely sure. Anyways, um, the board's pretty standard, just a lot of I.O. and a microcontroller. And then we have rows of field effect transistors over here. Uh, you can see on this particular board that one has been fried. So we're going to cover some basic procedure on how to repair a failed component like this. And uh, from the back side, you can see the board is pretty generic and boring if you want to build one of your own. Uh, main things you want to look for here is that the traces are intact, so you don't have to rebuild any traces. If you do, it's not the end of the world, but you need to check and, and plan for it in your repair. In this case, it's completely burned through on all three. I'm thinking probably some sort of mechanical damage when they were removing it from the machine. Um, as well as being overloaded from the scorching. Now, uh, this piece, uh, for some reason, doesn't have a metal backing like the other ones do to dissipate heat. So when I get it back in the machine, I'm also going to do a temperature test on it and make sure that we don't need to modify the design to include a heat sink. Now, with a field effect transistor, it's also important that you don't short heat seat heat sinks to ground or really to any other component unless the manufacturer specifically tells you to. So let's begin. Uh, first thing we really need to do here is go ahead and get the old component off the board. So start that by removing everything here. Let's see we got a nasty screwed up fat and a screw and nut. Okay. So what I like to do when I'm desoldering a component is actually add solder to it before I use my soldering braid to remove. As solder heats up and cools down over time, some of its mass dissipates and it doesn't get pulled into soldering braid very well. And you can easily damage traces by trying to force a pin out when you haven't removed all the solder. So I add some solder to it so it wicks a little bit better into my braid. Now, if you're wondering, soldering braid is a braid of copper wire. And so the idea is that you heat the braid up and it will pull solder into it. So you can kind of see that there. Then you just move on to a clean section of braid and take care of the next point.
Okay, with the clones removed, we're ready to fit our new transistor. Uh, as you can see, um, I did have to add some metal and mess around with some wires here to um, try providing conductivity. Uh, looking at the other transistors and uh, some of the burn through, it looked like they were connecting the metal bracket of the transistor to the center lead. So I went ahead and reconstructed that on the board as best as I could with some stranded copper wire and some stick uh, metal that I have. So it should dissipate, dissipate heat while maintaining conductivity just fine. You can go ahead and fit the new component now. now I've already gone ahead and bent the pins. like it needs a slight adjustment. Go ahead and adjust it. And there we go. So we can fit the screw through now. We're just going to tighten that firm for now, and we'll actually finish tightening it down once we've gotten the lead soldered into place. going to dust that center lead a little bit on the top side of the board just to make sure we get good through and through penetration. And clean the surface back up a little bit just for cosmetics with a little bit of soldering grid. there.